Howdy, and welcome to the Preaching Poetry Podcast. The Preaching Poetry Podcast uses poetry to inspire conversation and to rediscover the world. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome back. Today's poem is The Debt by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. This is the debt I pay just for one riotous day, years of regret and grief, sorrow without relief. Pay it I will to the end, until the grave, my friend, gives me a true release, gives me the clasp of peace. Slight was the thing I bought, small was the debt I thought, Poor was the loan at best, God but the interest. Now, before we dive into that, let's talk about the author for a minute. Paul Lawrence Dunbar was born in Dayton, Ohio on June the 27th, 1872 to freed slaves. So let that sink in for a minute. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, the son of... Of slaves. So yes, he's black. Now, he is also widely considered to be, if not the first great black poet, at least one of America's most influential black poets. Okay, his large, considerable body of work and his skill have earned him that distinction. All of that and the son of slaves. In my mind, it just makes it even that much more impressive. Now, Dunbar uh, was capable of writing in multiple forms. You see, he would write in traditional style, like the poem we just read, but he would also write in dialect, okay, in that sort of um, you know African American dialect at the time, um, and he could excel at both of them, and so. He uh, he very famously uh, was good at both of these types of poems, and honestly, both types of poems that he does are good and enjoyable. Um, <clears throat> I'd encourage you check out other poems of his. He is a very famous and um, well, like I said, he's got a large body of work. There's a lot you can find by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. There are probably a few that you already have heard of, right? One of them is called Sympathy. And in that poem, Dunbar writes this very famous line. I know why the caged bird sings. And if that sounds familiar to you, it may not even be because you've heard of Dunbar's poem, Sympathy. It's probably because you've heard of a woman named Maya Angelou. Okay? And she chose that line from one of Paul Lawrence Dunbar's poems to be the title of her uh, autobiography there. Okay? And so that line is famous. I know why the caged bird sings. Made probably made famous for most of us by Maya Angelou, but Paul Lawrence Dunbar was one of her favorite poets and inspired the name of that book. And then you also may have had to read it in school or you may have heard of it, another very famous poem of his called We Wear the Mask. Right, He says, we smile, but O oh, great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but O oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile, but let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. A powerful poet writing honestly about what life was like for black folk in the United States in that sort of um, era after slavery through Reconstruction and even the beginnings of Jim Crow. Um, Dunbar wrote many poems about what it was like to be black in America and wrote poems and short stories um, that don't pull any punches. Um, in fact, you know, there, there are several Dunbar poems. He's one of my favorite poets, um, one of my favorite American poets for sure. 
and um, we'll do other poems of his. And so we may actually do We Wear the Mask, or we may do some of these others, um, just because I think that he is an author that is not very widely known, um, not as famous as some of these other guys. Um, and he's just as talented, and he is... Uh, he writes powerful poetry. So I, I encourage you, check out some of his other poems as well, um, especially if you are interested in um, looking at someone who I would consider to be a, po a poetic genius, okay? He wrote in dialect and in sort of traditional style. So not only was he good at writing poems that, you know, sort of mainstream culture would get, but he would write those poems also um, in sort of the, you know, black dialect uh, of the South. Um, there's a lot of debate about whether or not that was um, a good thing, whether or not that just was sort of right up there with like the minstrel shows and other things that was kind of offensive and mocking. Um, but I think it's kind of hard to make the case that someone like Dunbar, who really, <laughs> I mean, the word we would use now is woke, um, but but I think that that uh, for a guy like Dunbar, it's not fair to really criticize him for something like that. Um, I think he did what he needed to do to get paid and to get published, and I think that he didn't uh, sell out. He he definitely um, wrote a lot of poems that told it plain and told it like it was. Um, anyway, Dunbar is a fascinating guy. Uh, I've I a while back I ordered a, a biography of his. But, you know, there, it's not in print anymore, so I'm ha I've had to wait, you know, quite a while, and I will probably won't get it until sometime this week. But anyway, an impressive guy. I'd encourage you to um, check him out because if you're going to keep listening to this podcast anyway, you're going to hear more Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Anyway, I'm going to stop geeking out. I'm a fanboy, but I'm, I'm going to tone it down. Let's actually get into the poem itself. I can't have this one run long like last week, okay? Um, so let, let's let's get into the poem, okay? There's three stanzas. They're simply uh, rhyming, you know, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B kind of thing. So uh, very simple rhyme scheme, simple poem, but the way that he writes this poem um, still just, to me, makes it beautiful. Um, the... the the words that he chose, the way that he said it, um, the simplicity and economy of the words that he used, uh, just a very beautiful poem. So he starts off by saying, this is the debt I pay just for one riotous day, years of regret and grief, sorrow without relief. And so it's easy to see very clearly at the beginning of this poem, um, the debt that he's talking about is, has to do with his regret. Right, so it's not debt in the traditional sense of he owes somebody money or he owes somebody a favor. He's talking about regret, probably for something that he did, and the debt is is accepting the consequences of what he has done. So, again, regret is the theme of this poem, and and I just I love that picture of regret as a debt. That is a fascinating concept for me. And that metaphor is one reason that this poem is so enjoyable and so good. Because you see, unlike a normal debt, you can't pay off the debt of your regret. Right? You can't go back and undo the decisions that you've made, good or bad. You can't go back and undo those things. All you can do is to move forward in time. You can't go backwards. And so while if you have a bunch of student loan debt or credit card debt, you can work and you can scrimp and save and coupon and all of that stuff, and you can pay off your debts. But there are some debts that you can't pay off, right? Especially if you've made some really bad choices in your life or you've had some really difficult things happen, you can't go back and undo those things. And so I'm just fascinated by this poem because I, I want to know what is Dunbar talking about? What does he regret? 
And dang it, he never tells us. He never gets down and like bears his soul to us and tells us what it is that he's regretting, what this debt is, what did he get out of it, and what does he have to owe now. He, he doesn't tell us that. He doesn't. I wish he would, but he doesn't. And so that's just another aspect of this poem that draws me in. Because I'm curious, I want to know. I want to know what what it is. I I, want to hear the story. And man, isn't that the mark of a good poet? There's a story behind this poem, and I want to know what it is. I don't know about you. That sort of thing draws me in. In any case, the second stanza, he says, Pay it I will to the end, until the grave, my friend, gives me a true release, gives me the clasp of peace. You see, there are some debts that we incur where we have to live with those consequences for the rest of our lives. But it's not just that you live with it for the rest of your life. You have to pay for it every day until death releases you from the debt. But like we said earlier, you never actually pay it off. It's in a, in a sense, it's debt slavery, which adds a whole nother interesting wrinkle when a guy like Dunbar is talking about it, a debt that you can never pay off. You know, perhaps this is a poem that has to do with the sort of baggage that could come from being black in Jim Crow America from being the son of slaves. Maybe, you know, people he knew and loved were slaves. And while that may not be a a debt or a bad decision that they made, you know, the idea of this sort of debt you can never pay off, um, something that happens to you that you have to deal with, that you have to constantly uh, live with the PTSD of forever. You know, when I think about something like being a slave or being the son of a slave... I can imagine that Dunbar really knows what he's talking about. Now, I don't think this poem is about having been enslaved. I don't think this poem is is about racial discrimination or anything like that necessarily. But I do think that understanding that what Dunbar is talking about is this is the kind of debt that you will pay for, the kind of decision that you make that has consequences you will pay for every day for the rest of your life, but you will never be able to put a dent in the balance. So how much good does it do you to pay on your debt every day and yet never be able to get out of it until you die? The debt of regret is crippling, and death is the only true release for it. And Dunbar seems to say that we will have no true peace until the debt is paid. He says, slight was the thing I bought, small was the debt I thought, poor was the loan at best, God, but the interest... Now, you can read this as a, a, a lot of different ways, but it's definitely an indictment against instant gratification. See, there are things that we may really, really want, but if we're not stopping to think about the long-term consequences of what we do, we can end up incurring some pretty massive debt. In that third stanza, he goes on to say, Slight was the thing I bought. Small was the debt I thought. Poor was the loan at best. God, but the interest. You see here, this is a powerful indictment against instant gratification. You know, sometimes we may really, really want something, but we're not thinking about the consequences of our actions. You know, and sometimes making one or two Poor decisions can lead you down a road where it costs you everything. You know, 
the first time you drive drunk may be the time that you destroy your car and kill somebody. That would be a heck of a debt to pay for a very slight thing that you bought. You didn't want to pay for an Uber? Like, <laughs> there's, there's a real sense in which sometimes we think that our bad decisions won't catch up to us, and sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. I think that it's one thing our society really has to learn. Like, people in the United States of America... Um, our culture is built around instant gratification. It's about getting what you want. Like you buy something off of Amazon, you know, it'll be there in two days. And if it's not because you don't have prime, well, first, what are you some kind of caveman if you don't have prime? But regardless, if it doesn't get there in two days, you're angry, you're ticked off. You know, I'm having to wait a while for this other book that I bought, this biography of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I'm not happy about it, but I got to wait. But we're not used to waiting. And we're not used to counting the cost. I mean, you know, you think about, is, is our lifestyle sustainable? Or are we borrowing a debt that we're not going to be able to repay very easy? And this could work on an individual basis, but it could also work on a societal basis. Okay? Sometimes delaying what we want right now sets us up for future success okay and it's important to understand that that's just the way that things go if you decide to live it up and to just do what you want and you know you're not considering the consequences of those actions you can end up in some difficult situations like, you may go on a date, she may be really cute, but if you sleep with her and she gets pregnant, like, <laughs> th this is not, maybe not what you were anticipating the consequences of your actions being, but it happens. And so there is a very real sense in which we need to be careful. We, we need to learn to delay our gratification. We need to, to learn to... Uh, <laughs> We need to learn to think about the consequences of our actions. Is it worth it? Some things, in the end, are not really worth it. They may seem like they're worth it in the moment. But at the end of the day, you know, the world isn't really fair. The decisions that you make early on are going to either set you up for a better chance of success or they're going to make it harder for you. Decisions that you make have consequences. See, good jobs are hard to come by. Nice cars and houses are expensive, right? And so if you, like, let's forget about debt in the sense of, you know, you made a bad decision you have to live with. Just Regular old-fashioned debt is easy to get into. It's easy to borrow money. Okay? So I, I, I had to borrow money to go to college. I decided that I wanted to go to a uh, private college. Costs a lot more. Um, I decided that I was not going to work as hard as I could to keep my scholarship. Cost me a lot more. And it, it turns out that I graduate with a degree that I'm not even in that field, okay? Um, I did not graduate with a degree in education, but I, I, I had to pay all this money for a degree. I'm not even using that degree. Like, how could my life have gone if I had not gotten into so much debt? Now, thankfully, I, I've paid off my student loans. I've paid off all of that debt, and, and it wasn't as much as it could have been considering, but, you know, how would my life have gone if I had never accrued that much debt? If I had gone to community college, done something else, whatever it is, um, gone the cheaper route, like I, I could have saved myself a lot of heartache, a lot of stress. 
And paying off that money has sort of, you know, paying off that debt put me back. You know, like that that's money that I could have been investing. That's money that I could have been using to, to buy a home or um, to invest in, in a 401k or in a mutual fund or something. Like I could have taken those thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and and done something a lot more productive with them than pay off debt. And so just like monetary debt can really cause some problems, you know, with monetary debt, like with the student loans, I'm trying to pay off the highest interest loans first because, yeah, those that's going to end up costing me more in the long run. And, you know, eventually had to sit down with a, a buddy of mine and kind of make a plan for how, how can, how can I pay this off the fastest? Thankfully the guy was really good helping me snowball the debt and the different loans. And it was very helpful, but we've got to think about the interest on that debt because it's not just that I had to borrow the money. It's that I had to pay back the, the, the debt and the interest. I had to pay back the principal balance and the interest. And y'all, it's the same with life. We don't just have to pay for the decisions that we make. Sometimes we have to pay interest on those decisions every day. So let's say that you did drive drunk. And let's say you didn't, you didn't cause the, the, the biggest problem in the world. Let's say maybe you, uh, you know, you, you didn't kill anybody, but you, you crashed your car and you, uh, you know, you know, you, uh, break your leg. Or even worse, let's say that you end up, uh, you know, paralyzed from the waist down. You're going to be paying for that one poor decision every day. And even after you pay for the damage to your car and you, you know, <laughs> pay a fine, let's say you get caught, um, you, like let's say you do all of those things, you're still going to have to live with being paralyzed. And y'all, that's not like something that could never happen. I think that what Dunbar shows us in this poem is that we ought to be wise. It's almost like, man, we, Dunbar wants us to learn from him so that we're careful about the decisions that we make. Whereas Horace says, seize the day, not trusting the future. I think we have to be careful with that. And we talked about the sort of nuance in seizing the day and plucking the day in that poem about how there's that, 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 um, that Horace was, had, had more of that, uh, sort of Epicurean, um, don't overdo it kind of mentality. I think that Dunbar would agree with him. Don't overdo it. Be wise. Consider the consequences of your actions. Not that you're obsessing over the future, but in the things that you're deciding to do today, consider the risk. With how you spend your money, debt is crushing and powerful. And in fact, debt is one of the, um, one of the most difficult things for people in the United States to get out of. People file bankruptcy over medical debt and credit card debt at alarming rates. There are people who compare debt to slavery, and they're not far off. Now, it's not just money that you have to be careful with, though. Maybe it's romantic relationships. You know, getting hurt and burned can cost you. Okay, that's pretty, pretty common. Okay, so I think about a buddy of mine who, uh, <laughs> he was married, had a, a beautiful d a daughter, um, but things did not go terribly well. Um, and so while he does have a wonderful daughter that he loves very much, um, his wife, like my buddy's wife stole money from him, opened up credit cards in his name. Um, he's paying child support. And he's doing all these other things, but she she wrecked his credit, she stole money from him, she racked up debt in his name, and dealing with all of those consequences, that's something that he is dealing with constantly. And the like there is a lot of regret there. Now, I'm not saying that 
you know, the whole thing was a wash. He has a wonderful child, and, and that's a good thing. I'm not saying the whole thing was bad, but I'm saying that this is an example to show you if, you don't, if you're not careful about your relationships, about who you let get close and into your life, especially if you're going to get married and like open up credit cards together and bank accounts with each other's names, you got to be careful about who you're willing to do that with, who you're willing to get into bed with. <laughs> yeah, I know that was a pun. But we also need to be careful with our recreation, like drugs, alcohol, sex. Those things can be a lot of fun, but addiction is not fun. (laughs) And so I think we have to, we have to be careful. You don't want to get addicted. You don't want to become indebted to something like that. And so as much as much temporary fun as it might be to abuse drugs, alcohol, pornography, sex, whatever it is, as much as much as you might get a rush or a thrill in that one moment, the consequences are and the consequences are devastating. And those are the kinds of things that you don't ever really completely get away from. That could be a debt you pay on the rest of your life. But I also think we have to be careful with our words. Because I imagine that, that, that a relationship can be broken. In the heat of the moment, you may get angry. You may something, say something terrible. And it may feel cathartic in that moment. But it may cost you a relationship. It may cost you a friend. It may do damage to an existing relationship. It may cost you a a lover, a spouse. I don't know. But we all understand that doing that one thing, saying that one dumb thing that felt really good in that moment could end up costing us. And it could bring us some regret that we may have to take a long time to deal with and we may never pay off completely. Now, at the end of the day, we don't know what Dunbar was indebted to, and we don't even know what it was. We know it was a riotous day, but he contrasts that day with years of regret and grief. And so I think that with this poem, this sermon by the debt, by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, I think we can say amen to this. We can say, yeah. Debt can be crushing, debt can be severe, and especially when it comes to having to deal with regret and grief over the consequences of poor decisions that we make, I think we can all agree that uh, we don't want to be the kind of people who buy slight things and who think we're just incurring a small debt, but the interest gets us for the rest of our lives. We don't want to be like that. Now, I don't know. You may think something different here, uh, but you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. What are things that are worth uh, the, what, what are some things that are worth that debt? There may be some things that you do that it may, you, you may not have every decision that you make cost you something. I don't think you can allow yourself to be paralyzed by fear of consequences, but I do think that we got to be wise and consider that some things may not be worth the price. Thank you for listening to the Preaching Poetry Podcast. I hope that you enjoyed your time with us, and we look forward to having you back for more. If you like what you heard, please be sure to leave a review and don't forget to subscribe. If you're looking for more content, you can find us on Apple, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, basically anywhere you find podcasts. If you want to join our community or just want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Preaching Poetry.